Hello everyone. Today, let's talk machine learning. So recently I've been poking my nose into machine learning and it's somehow intimidating when you start going into it. And that's why I'm here. So today we're gonna go into a deeper definition of machine learning versus deep learning. We will look at the top machine learning algorithms and just try to understand them at a high level. And then look at tools that require no code at all to do your own machine learning model and potentially deploy it. And hey, if you stick till the end, after I give you all these great things, I can tell you what to do with this going forward if you're interested in the field of machine learning. Before we go into the details of it, wh why would you learn machine learning? Why would you go into the headache of learning even no-code tools for machine learning? Well, I think it's fundamental. Artificial intelligence is becoming an integral part of our everyday life. And I believe if you really want to understand artificial intelligence, you need to understand machine learning at some level, deep learning. And it is an old science that is already affecting so many areas of my, our life and we're using it nearly everywhere. I think it will just complement so many things you might be doing in your career and life that you don't know this understanding of machine learning will help out. Watch the video, invest this little time. Believe me, by the end of it, you will feel you're much knowledgeable. You will be able to create, train, run, maybe deploy your own models. So the first thing, what is machine learning? So what this blog tells us, in a nutshell, machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence, which most of us already know, in which computers provide predictions based on patterns learned directly from data without being explicitly programmed to do so. You'll notice in this definition that machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence. As such, let's break definition down into more detail, as oftentimes terms such as machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep learning, and even data science are used interchangeably. Okay, so let's look at what's artificial intelligence. So one of the best definitions of artificial intelligence comes from Andrew NG, co-founder of Google Brain and former chief scientist at Beidou, I guess. According to Andrew, artificial intelligence is a huge set of tools of making computers behave intelligently. So this is interesting. So he defines it as being a huge tool set rather than an algorithm or a model on its own. So let's carry on. This can include anything ranging from explicitly defined systems like calculators to machine learning based solutions like spam email detectors. So it's a wide range, but basically it is a set of tools as per this definition. Now, what's machine learning? So as outlined above, machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence in which algorithms learn patterns from historical data and provide predictions based on these learned patterns. By applying them to new data, traditionally simple intelligent systems uh, like calculators are explicitly programmed by developers as clearly defined steps and procedures, i.e. if this then that. However, this isn't scalable or possible for more advanced problems. Fundamentally, machine learning is a group of algorithms designed to go and look into data sets and then find patterns. Those patterns will give that model or that algorithm output the ability to predict outcomes. So you give it a huge data set, the algorithm will go through it, it will be able to predict future results based on that huge data set. And depending on what type of prediction we want to do, which we'll go through later, it will start giving you that prediction. And that's it in a nutshell. But now, how is deep learning different from machine learning? Deep learning is a subfield of machine learning and is probably responsible for popular culture's most visible machine learning use cases. Deep learning algorithms are inspired by the structure of the human brain and require incredible amounts of data for training. They are often used for the most complex cognitive problems such as speech detection, language translation, self-driving cars, and more. Check out the comparison between, so let's go do that. Look at the uh, deeper detailed 
comparison between machine learning and deep learning. Now let's look at how machine learning is defined in this comparison. So machine learning is a way to implement artificial intelligence. Effectively, it's a specialized branch within the expansive field of AI, which in turn is a branch of computer science. Okay, that's that we know. With machine learning, we can develop algorithms that have the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. These algorithms include, so these are the main algorithms, decision tree, naive bias, random forest, support vector machine, K nearest neighbor, K means clustering, um, Gaussian mixture model, hidden Markov model. So what is deep learning? So deep learning is a subcategory of machine learning focused on structuring a learning process from computers where they can recognize patterns and make decisions much like humans do. For instance, if we are teaching a computer to distinguish between different animals, we start with simpler foundational concepts like a number of legs and gradually introduce more complex ones like habitats and behaviors. In the realm of machine learning, deep learning is distinguished by the use of neural networks with three or more layers. These multi-layered neural networks strive to replicate the learning pattern of the human brain, enabling the computer to analyze and learn from vast volume of data. A single layered network can make rudimentary predictions, but as we add more layers, the network becomes capable of understanding intricate patterns and relationships enhancing its predictive accuracy. So the way I understand it now is that although deep learning is a subset of machine learning, but it's a little bit more associated with artificial intelligence compared to machine learning. So machine learning has those mathematical algorithms that take data, look at the patterns, the trends in them, and use that just without code, without any complication to start uh, predicting the outcome. So it's pure math type of prediction. Now, deep learning, uh, it is used for more complex things. So they are what, what differentiates it from machine learning is the use of neural networks. So it uses neural networks to basically analyze the data like humans do. But essentially, the goal of deep learning is the ability to predict. But this is the type of prediction that's closer to how humans might predict rather than uh, mathematical equations. Definitely, it's based on math. But I hope you get the idea of deep learning now. So it's used for more complex things. And usually it has three more layer of neural networks. So machine learning as a concept has no neural networks. Deep learning does use that technology. Now you can carry on reading this on your own when I share the link. But I just want to show something that we covered the last video. So when it comes to deep learning, we covered the last time the convolutional neural networks. And those are the ones that are ideally used to analyze image and analyze facial expression. So as you can see here, because deep learning is associated with those neural networks, deep learning is the technology used for analyzing things like speech, but definitely as we see in the example here, uh, facial expressions. And in the last video that I will tag in the end screen, we've done our own visualization with convolutional networks. And uh, we looked at the different definitions and technicalities of those. And we used some tools to play with the network and see how it predicts the outcome. So fundamentally, because deep learning uses these neural network or for image convolutional neural networks and having so many layers, I think that's where deep comes from. So it's deep in terms of the depth of that neural network that is used to come up with the prediction. Okay, so there are other things you can read here, but let's go to our main topic, understanding the algorithms of machine learning. So today we wanna to focus on machine learning. So this is the visual that you will always see if you search for artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. Deep learning as the goal of it is predicting patterns and outcomes using maybe a little bit different technology through neural networks is a subset of machine learning as a concept. Machine learning is the bigger concept that you provide an algorithm with data, that data will be analyzed, we will see patterns in that data, we will be able to predict the outcome. 
But mostly when we say machine learning, what differentiates it from deep learning, as we said, it has nothing to do with neural network for the most part. And then we go to the artificial intelligence, which encompasses everything. And it's the set of tools that we put all these things together to start using it and having use cases through putting these tools together. And now data science is basically a cross-disciplinary field that seeks to extract value from data. So this is all about data science here. Okay, what are the different types of machine learning that we need to know? And the first one is supervised machine learning. Most machine learning use cases revolve around algorithms, learning patterns from historical data and applying them to new data in the form of predictions. This is often referred to as supervised learning. Supervised learning algorithms are shown both historical inputs and outputs on a particular problem we're trying to solve, where inputs are essentially features or dimensions of the observation we are trying to predict and where outputs are the outcomes we want to predict. Let's illustrate this with our spam detection example. Okay, so there's an example you can go through. Essentially, when it comes to machine learning data sets, we will always have our training data set, which is the data we're gonna use to train the model. But also on top of that, we're gonna have the validation data set and the testing data set. So you have three types. It's essentially the same data, but the use is different. So the training is used to actually run it through the model and see the patterns. And then the validation is validating the model accuracy. So validation is where things are known. So that's the basically supervised part. The output is known, you know the output. You push it through the model and you validate if the model is getting it right or not. And then the testing is where it's not part of the learning, it's actually implementation type of testing. So you test it and see how much it's actually getting the predictions right. What's the error? What's the variances? So all of these concepts that we've discussed last time come in here. Fundamentally, there are two types of supervised machine learning, the regression and the classification. So regression use cases are when we try to predict a continuous outcome that falls within a range. A good example would be house price predictions based on the square footage of the house, where it's located, the number of bedrooms, and other relevant dimensions. Now for classification, use cases are when we try to classify whether an outcome falls within two or more categories. For example, spam detectors are classification models either spam or not spam, so we have two categories essentially. But other classification use cases include Customer churn predictions, will churn or not churn, identifying cars and pictures, multiple categories, and more. Now, the way I see it in simple terms, if you have numbers, you're predicting basically a numerical value, mostly you're going to work with regression. If you want to define a category, classify something based on data into a category, it could, it could have numbers, but probably you're looking at classification. Now that covers the supervised machine learning. Now what's unsupervised machine learning? Instead of learning patterns that map inputs to outputs, unsupervised learning algorithms discover general patterns in data without being explicitly shown outputs. Unsupervised learning algorithms are commonly used to group and cluster different objects and entities. A great example of unsupervised learning is customer segmentation. Companies often have a variety of customer personas they have to serve. Organization often wants to have a fact-based approach to identify their customer segments to serve them better. Enter unsupervised learning. So that's a really nice visual here. So you see all these unlabeled uh, shapes, basically. It goes to that unsupervised uh, model and then the model will categorize them based on shape so that's somehow what is unsupervised learning and as we read the output is not part of the equation the output within the data set is not part of that thing we provide to the model and hey if you're enjoying the video so far don't forget to hit subscribe maybe write a comment and if you see major value out of what I'm delivering to you in this video and other videos, you might as well click the ring icon so you keep getting my videos when they are out. Okay, with that, let's go back. So now we have the third type, which is reinforcement 
learning. Reinforcement learning is a subset of machine learning algorithms that utilize reward to promote a desired behavior or prediction and a penalty otherwise. Reinforcement learning is responsible for algorithms that exceed human level intelligence in games such as chess, go, and more. Is this the thing that will take over Earth in the future? And the Terminator probably will come to save us? Okay, so it's a behavioral modeling technique where the model learns through a trial and error mechanism as it keeps interacting with the environment. Let's illustrate that with the chess example. At a high level, a reinforcement learning algorithm, often named agent, is provided an environment, chessboard, where it can make a variety of decisions, play moves, okay? Each move has a set of associated scores, a reward for actions that lead the agent to win, and a penalty for moves that lead the agent to lose. The agent keeps interacting with the environment to learn the actions that reap the most rewards and keep repeating those actions. This repetition of promoted behavior is called the exploitation phase, when the agent looks for new avenues to earn rewards. This is called the exploration phase. More generally, this is referred to as the exploration exploitation paradigm. Okay, that's interesting. So this is the environment. This is the agent. I would assume this is the um, algorithm that we are trying to train into a model. So there's actions, there's reward, and there's observations. So the agent within the environment will keep basically trying to do actions that will get the rewards it's programmed to look for. And then there's observations on how it is maybe behaving. So that's crazy stuff basically. But I think this is a term we should remember, reinforcement learning. That's interesting. Now, the fourth concept is self-supervised machine learning. Self-supervised learning is a data-efficient machine learning technique where the model learns from an unlabeled sample data set as shown in the sample below. The first model is fed some unlabeled uh, input images which are clustered by using features generated from these images. Some of these examples would have high confidence of belonging to the clusters while others don't. The second step uses the high confidence labeled data from the first step to train a classifier that tends to be more powerful than a one-step clustering approach. This is an interesting topic. So we have the pre-train and the fine-tune. If you remember, one of our videos where we tried to develop a model and deploy it based on Google's Teachable Machine, um, we have actually had to define the images that we're giving the model. So I was telling the model, for example, these are pictures for a dog, and then it will use that data to predict. Now here, we're pushing that information, and apparently this is something, or seems so, more linked to images, but here we are giving the model data without labels. So for this example, we're giving it pictures, images, and it is doing the labeling and the clustering. And then it is fine tuning based on those labels at a second phase. So it will use the same labels that it, it clustered to actually verify and train the model at a second level. Let's read more. I think this is interesting, a little bit confusing for me. So this seems like something more related to images. Maybe I'm wrong, but just um, an observation. The difference between self-supervised and supervised algorithms is that the classified output in the former still won't have the classes mapped to real objects. It differs from the supervised learning as it does not depend on the manually labeled set and generates labels by itself, hence the name self-learning. So I think I understood it right. I don't know exactly how it works. So, you know, all of these concepts are things you can dig deeper and deeper into if you want to learn more about them. So now the interesting stuff. So these algorithms, some of them are really common, some of them are not. I'm gonna go through the top three probably and just skim through the rest so you can do the reading and the studying for yourself. I think this is the best way 
to get the best outcome so we can actually progress and look at the more interesting part of how can we do such models train such models without code and what tools to use okay so the first algorithm linear regression so a simple algorithm models so a simple algorithm models a linear relationship between one or more explanatory variables and a continuous numerical output variable it is faster to train compared to other machine learning algorithms its biggest advantage lies in its ability to explain and interpret the model predictions it is a regression algorithm used to predict outcomes like customer life cycle value housing prices and stock prices so this is how it looks so you can see this is uh, data points i guess from a model and you can see how they're distributed across the uh, the x-axis and the y-axis so this looks like something for insurance so you can see here claims and then payments and basically what this will do is we'll have all these data points mapped so this is let's say something related to a number of claims and then the value I'm assuming and it will map those kind of correlations so it's basically looking at those correlation and then it will try to create that kind of linear relationship which is fundamentally a straight line pattern it will use this later on to predict so for example if we uh, are trying to get the 80 uh, what comes as a cost or a payment for an 80 claim I don't know what 80 refers to is it a count is it something else uh, but regardless it will simply go to this line, find this point, check on the y-axis, and then say it's 300. This is how it will predict. So it will use this line to predict. Now, each algorithm will have its preferred or best case use cases. So you cannot always use this um, for anything that has numbers. You might not get the outcome that you're looking for. So go through all the algorithms available in machine learning or well-known machine learning and learn each one. Okay, so let's go to the next one. The next one is decision trees. A decision tree algorithm is a tree-like structure of decision rules that are applied to the input feature to predict the possible outcomes. It can be used for classification or regression. Decision tree predictions provide a good aid for healthcare experts as it is straightforward to interpret how those predictions are made. You can refer to the tutorial if you are interested in learning how to build decision tree classifier using Python. Further, if you are more comfortable using R, then you will benefit from this tutorial. Okay, so it's giving you basically sources if you want to take it a step further and start building those modules, but this is code. So if that's your thing, you want to go there, go and read those sources about it now i skipped a bunch of them you can go and read those algorithms but i wanted to cover this the k-means clustering so k-means is the most widely used clustering approach it determines k clusters based on the equilibrium distance it is a very popular algorithm for customer segmentation and recommendation systems so basically this is a model or an algorithm that will look at all the data points, measure the distances between them, so you can read more about the equilibrium distance, and then start clustering them based on those distances. So basically, for example, um, it will see the distance between this point and this point and this point and this point, and then this point and this point. So it will somehow notice that this is a significant group compared to this group compared to this group and it will then create those classifications so at any moment you give it a data source or a data input to use for prediction or classification it will simply map it here if it falls in this uh, area well it will classify it as black here blue and then here green so that's the high level concept of this model so if you go to this link it's an amazing one um, the internet is filled with free information and data and learning so you can see all the different types of models how they work what's their use cases the benefit and they link most of them to other even articles if you want to dig deeper and uh, i think depending on your interest you should go and do it now before we go to the tools one thing i want to share with you so i found this really nice link that has 10 use cases of machine learning models so basically people created models and they deployed them so you can see how they work so there are 10 different cases or 
demos you can go and play with and uh, basically one of them is cleanse top words then opinion mining text entity extractor and so forth go play with them if you like that thing but it will give you a hint of how this is a little bit from experiment different from ai and what machine learning actually does in real life into predicting things happening now let's jump to the fun part now the tools i'm gonna look at are obviously ai and then data robot and after that we will look at azure and what it has to offer and finally we will go to a tool that surprised me personally that actually exists is apple's machine learning and we'll check that out now for the demo purposes i will probably do it um, on only data robot and then we will try to do it on apple as well but before we decide on the tool we're going to test we need a data set so there's so many amazing websites that gives you free data set some of it is free some of it's paid obviously but you'll find free small data sets that you can use to test these things create your own models play with it so let's move to kegel so kegel is one of those well-known websites where you can download a data set and I downloaded basically Marvel movies box office data something to make this a little bit less boring so let's look at the data set for a second here so we have the movies in the first column then we have the category we have the year um, and then we have other numbers and percentages for the movie for example we have the worldwide gross um, uh, revenue I would say in million and then the recovered budget recovered critics score uh, the audience percentage score and then the difference between audience and critic the budget the most i mean just numbers like all the metrics that maybe people in hollywood are interested to understand about those movies so for example here we we can look at the audience score of the movie and try to predict the budget this is one correlation we can create. Another correlation we can make is, for example, look at what the critics are saying and then associate it only and try to predict the international gross in million. So how it does internationally compared to what critics say. This is where this thing gets really good. As humans, it's very hard for us, especially if it's the data is huge, to see these correlations. Now, now probably for such a sheet, we can analyze it, create a chart, create our own mind of those correlations but imagine this is hundreds of thousands of rows and maybe hundreds of columns millions of data points so then we need machine learning to do it for us so this is the data we're gonna try to play with it my intention is not to create a model and launch it for you my intention is just to encourage you to go and look up these tools and try to play with them you might want to do more you might find your passion in machine learning. It's a really interesting field. I am still getting into it, by the way. So I'm no expert by no means on machine learning. I'm just taking you along with me in my learning journey. But I am planning to dig deeper into it. And by the end of the video, if you keep sticking around, I will tell you what tool I will try to make it my main tool to develop my knowledge and expertise in machine learning. Okay, so the first tool we're looking at is called Obviously I. It's a really good tool for beginners and potentially you can do lots of advanced things with it, uh, but it is worthwhile to check out as the first tool. You can put your data, you can do the clustering, you can do the predictions, you can have the model. I didn't try to see how you launch it, but you can launch it from here, I think through an endpoint, um, or you can just use it for a demo. So not everyone wants to have a serious model to use in an application probably this is not the way to do it uh, but you can read more so i don't want to be someone who's giving you misinformation around um, this website i checked it it's a pretty simple uh, machine learning website so you have a tab for your data sets you upload there are test data sets that come with it so you can play with those you can include your own data set and see what you get with it and then you can create the models here i think you know if you depending on the model that you use you can actually uh, export it do things with that model and then you can come here and play with the predictions so to test the model basically now for our learning i think it is good to spend little time on data robot so this is data robot now data robot 
is I think made for companies, made for enterprise, not for individuals. So it's a high end technical type of machine learning tool. Uh, made for enterprises again not individuals so i couldn't find a, a place where there's pricing and you can subscribe the process of going through data robot and training the model in data robot it will explain to you how these things work now you might not be able to launch it maybe you need to subscribe which is maybe available only for enterprise but do it once i would say you get a month with your uh, free free account go for a month Get your data sets, play with it, see what it tells you about the data, explains about the data, which we'll do now, learn from it, and then, okay, use some other tools to further uh, progress with machine learning in terms of deploying your own model. So for data robot, let's start with our data set. So we're gonna go for a local file here, and this is our data set. So it's uploading the data now, it will be quick. You can see here always on the right, it will explain this is one something nice exactly what it's doing so it will upload it then it will read it then it will be exploring the data analysis okay so it read the data now we are expected to select a target now this is one of the nice things you'll start learning when you go into such a tool is that okay what is the target so basically it's, it's the target is the thing or the field that we want to make as the main prediction from this module that we're trying to create here. So for example, it could be the uh, a price, a stock price. So everything that the data has will always correlate with each other and then with that target. So you'll get the best outcome when basically you're giving any number of data points to always predict for you that target but i guess it needs to know what is your target so it will do it in the best way possible so here for us let's select a target um it could be something like the gross worldwide gross or the international gross let's go with the worldwide gross so let's try to predict the worldwide gross based on the other data points now this is a small freaky data set just to play with it um so we might not get things that you expect out of this it's just to show you how that cycle works, how data models work essentially. So here we can start with training our models. And what these tools usually do, it will take our data set after understanding it, exploring it, and it will run it through so many available models in data robot and any other tool in the same manner. And it will start looking at those kind of outcomes of these model runs and it will recommend for you, oh, this model could work better for your use case, or this model is better. And you'll have all those models available for you so you can explore them, play with them, and maybe decide to build your model based on one of them. Now, if you're a coding expert, if you're a machine learning expert, you can even, some people will basically go and build their own model to uh, work their data. But that's a whole different thing we're not going to go into. So let's click start and see what it will do with our data and what models it will pull in. Okay, it will take time, so I might do cutting here. But you can see here, it's basically setting target uh, features. And we use the feature word. So feature is when you see the label of the column, that's a feature. So you'll see that, uh, you'll hear that word in machine learning a lot. A feature is basically a data point, a reference point. Uh, in an excel sheet it was the label of the column so that's a feature so now as you see the models are running here on the right side uh, it analyzed the data it did some stuff with it it has a target here even it gave me uh, a, an assessment of the data quality so you can see here i can pull down there's some issues four features are detected as causing potential target leakage consider making a custom feature like without any leak, leaking features. So I'll be totally honest, I don't know what it means when it says um, target leakage. I will read more about this. So I'm interested in machine learning. I want to do uh, more uh, in this area. But now what I know is that our data set, we can see here the target and the correlations. Okay, this is the importance um, for the target. So the number one correlation is domestic and then opening weekend. So that's interesting. And then uh, second weekend and then budget uh, covered and so forth. So what, how important is each of these features to our target, which is the international gross. But here now we can go to the models. We can look at the models. So you see, as of now, it has selected six models to train. 
So the elastic net regressor, so this is one type of model, and then a different elastic net regressor, a uh, lot gradient boosting on elastic net predictions, okay? Rule fit regressor, light gradient. So basically different type of models it is picking up as good fits for this data sets and it's training them. And even you have a Python based one here at the end. Now, there are so many tabs. It's a little bit uh, complex tool, little bit. There are worse ones. Um, but the interesting thing, you can start clicking at the model. And the first thing you will see here is the blueprint. So it will take the data and it will have categorical variables and then numerical variables. And then here for those categories, uh, one hot encoding and then missing value imputed, smooth um, Reddit transform, and then elastic net regressor. So it will run it here and then we'll get a prediction. Most of it didn't make sense for me. But again, you know, I want to put you on a pathway to learning machine learning if this is your thing. These tools do not have lots of code or code at all. So uh, uh, data robot doesn't have code, by the way. Um, you can use code with it, I guess, but for the most part, you can use it without code. So you can learn a lot. Now, all of these concepts, they are either specific terms for the models and who created them, or you can look them up and, and see for yourself. Uh, and here you can take even the blueprint in a JSON format. Then let's go to evaluate for a second here. So this is where why uh, data robot is good, because you can start looking at charts and understand your data in depth. So you might have a complex data set, even if you do not want to deploy the model and you know, through an endpoint and uh, play with it through a tool. You, what you can do is you can put your data through data robot and analyze it, get data robot to analyze it for you. Okay, that's amazing. If this shows something for the most part, it was able to predict accurately. Now, at some point, pushing the training, I think, or pushing the limits on the testing process, the gap increased. So a big gap is not a good thing. If the predicted is aligned with the actual, that's good. So it predicted the right thing. So the orange is what was actual in terms of the data. The blue is what was predicted. Here as well, we can look at the residuals. And basically the residuals, it will give us a judgment of the quality of our model. Okay. So all our charts, things that data scientists use every day, some of them and most, most of them actually are in, intuitive. And again, many areas here on that robot will have this information button and you can read about it. What does that mean? And here you have the residuals distribution and the predictions distribution. And here you can see this is very interesting. So our model um, is basically a regressor. It has a regression. So we, we went through that. It will look at the pattern and it will try to find the linear correlation so you see these are the actuals and the predictions uh, this is how it's there's a some kind of linear relationship now the, the data set is limited so at some point we have like, like these anomalies if you want to call them between the prediction and the actual but for the most part here there is some kind of uh, clear correlation across this linear line so um, you can do tuning as well so you can go here and do some advanced tuning if that's your thing okay this is um, working with lambda i honestly don't know all the concepts i'm still on my journey some of it i'm getting it slowly some of it not yet now here if you click on understand you can see the feature impact we've seen some of those feature impact in the beginning um so it shows you basically the domestic gross in millions then budget recovered so these are our, our features or fields and then how they are linked to the target and then here we have the opening weekend there's some what what's called the leakage we'll have to read about that so there's an issue with the uh, data you can dismiss this one but you can start basically looking at your features and how they correlate to the target and other things so let's go go to the feature effect so here you know you can look at the different features and how they're linked to our target and it automatically charted for us the highest correlation. So it's 100%, there's 100% correlation between domestic gross and the target, which is the uh, worldwide gross. So like the easiest thing you can tell if a movie, if a, at least a Marvel movie does really well domestically in the US, I guess, uh, it will do well worldwide. So that's an easy kind of correlation you can, the data is telling you. So you need to focus on making it work and uh, you, the United States, I guess, 
but you know you can switch to something else and see how that chart looks and how that chart looks and analyze it further so there's so many things you can do here and just you can start playing around with these tabs getting the information and in-depth analysis of your data based on each model and now it's recommending for us for deployment this model which is basically 100% fit for our uh, data set and it has the leakage whatever it was talking about about target leakage removed so it's a smart model that was able to process our data properly the same thing you can go here evaluate it um, look at how it works and then start um, looking at um, the logic behind it the results of it before you deciding if you want to go with this or something else for me i'll just go with whatever this tool is recommending now let's quickly see how you can deploy it so here you can go to predict and then you can click deploy now before you deploy it you have to register the model so i'll go to register the model and this is me registering the problem is here where i face problems with that robot after i register it and after i deploy it so i'm clicking here deploy um okay i get into that part so here i want to uh, go for a data robot environment i click confirm so it is deploying my model in theory when i deploy it even in testing environment i can build a test application through data robot and see how it works is it predicting uh what i want but then after that testing is done then i can yeah invest into some proper kind of infrastructure to deploy the model and endpoints and use it for an application if i if that's my thing um but i'm not able to test here the model so let's deploy the model for now so here you see all the deployments that you have and this is ours so if i go into my deployment here it's complete it's done everything is good so in theory i can deploy it into a test application so if i look at prediction environment i have the trial environment where i placed it but i keep getting not applicable for health if you go to creating an application so here there are multiple types of applications you can create with this if i use the predictor and this is what happens always give it just any name um and i, I say maybe invited users only or whatever i select the model i say create this is happening live and it never ever worked with me now it is working so okay let me authorize okay no thanks not found Okay. so the application is there and I can build it wow okay so this is a widget so give me a second because I was never able to deploy maybe I said it so much times here that they got pissed <laughs> they just gave it to me okay let's see what we can do with it so I'm just looking at it it's looking at the rows looking at the data points let's add a row here okay so I think I can test here because it's asking me to put um, a number okay so this is usually between 134 and 858 so this is um the domestic gross and this is what was 100 percent correlated if you remember in one of the models at least with the worldwide so let's put this as 150 million what else we want to put here um the difference between critics and uh, the um, uh, audience in terms of satisfaction let's put it as minus five percent or minus five um opening weekend i think it was one of the um good kind of uh points to use to estimate we'll just put 55 here what happens if i say add will it predict for me it predicted so it's predicting that worldwide this movie will do five or six million it worked i it's honestly the first time that a robot gives me an application so i don't know if the data sets i used before were wrong or this is different but um, uh, there was an issue maybe in those data or they were too big uh, for such a free account. But now I'm getting predictions. So at least you've seen it. Voila. So now I have a model. It's uh, by the way, this model in theory is I'm creating an application. So it's something that I have deployed already within a, a test environment. But in theory, if you subscribe to Data Robot, you train the model, you give it more data. You can, by the way, give secondary uh, data sets to train it even further. You deploy it, you can link it to an application. You can create an API endpoint. So for example, you can create a tool where in that tool, you can give the year of a movie, uh, the audience score maybe, you can give 
um, domestically uh, the, the the budget and it will predict for you how it will do worldwide so you have your own machine learning model working no code so this is the application whenever you think machine learning you need to think about two main tools depending on what level you want to go into um, when you want to explore machine learning one of them is Azure obviously and here you have Azure Machine Learning Studio. And the other one is the infamous AWS SageMaker. I need to caution you here. Now, these tools, they have what you call AutoML or Automation Machine Learning or whatever different tools to make you build machine learning on these platforms, no code. Still, the learning curve is even more complex than Data Robot. So you need to do some research. The good thing about them is that the documentation is comprehensive and it's available at abundance. Even if you go to ChatGPT and ask it about either tool, it will give you step-by-step -step detail in how to do it even with code and without code. This is something you plan to your appetite when it comes to machine learning. For me, I have decided that I will focus on Azure Machine Learning Studio and I will invest time to learn it the no-code way. I will not spend time to do it with code, but I will definitely upload uh, data sets to a data instance and then try to create models launch them and even interact with those endpoints or applications that i create now be aware here please be aware all these services especially aws and azure they can if you make a mistake in building the model they can charge you really expensive be careful do not play with it without doing your research maybe asking around Make sure that you remain within the free credit they give you when you create such an account or within the testing environment. But even if you use their assets in testing, so you deploy for testing reasons, you will incur charges at some point. So be careful what you're doing, what kind of data, what kind of settings you're using. And hey, ChatGPT will help a lot. Read online, watch videos on YouTube. Most people will show you the pitfalls where you might pay money. This is the machine learning uh, studio. I created my own machine learning instance. It's ready to go. I didn't build anything, but you can see there's data. So there's three things when it comes to machine learning and even AI, data, computing, and the model. So three things you need and you have here in one place. So this is, I think, where you either recover or put the data. Here you can see the models. It's even mentioned here. And then the environment is the computing. And here you can say you can manage the computing itself because they have so many different services and they try to bring it to you in one place. But I think you might have to set up the compute separately if you're serious about this, set up the data separately if it's a huge data and then uh, launch your model. But here you can see, you can see the models, even, even 4.0 is one of the machine learning models you can use. So that's pretty interesting. And you can add a compute session here, say, if you, if you want to run something really heavy to, um, uh, to, to train your model and then deploy it. And you can do it all from one place. Um, before I close on this one, they have what you call the auto or automated ML. So this is one that you can do without code, without anything. Many of the things, by the way, you can do here on the interface, but I would recommend start with um, AutoML before you uh, go to the other more complex aspects of things and then decide for yourself to what level you want to experiment with machine learning. Now, last but not least, so I was shocked that Apple have big game when it comes to machine learning. And where is that? It's there in their Xcode. So Xcode is basically the software that you use or the environment that you use to program Apple applications. Within it, you have a no-code type of machine learning within Apple Xcode. So let's go to Apple Xcode. So this is the Xcode. Don't worry, I'm not going to code it here. I don't know how to code Apple at all. I don't know how to code at all. Okay, but if you go to Xcode here, then you click at the Xcode button and you go to open developer tools, you'll see something called create ML, which is create machine learning. And from here you can access the tool. So let's open the machine learning tool. Okay, so here we're prompted to create a new document. So I'll click new document and you can see the different models uh, it offers that we can work with. 
So we have image classification. This is in Apple. Just download Xcode. Object detection. Style transfer. So you can do so many things with its machine learning. Now, if we want to think about our data sets with Marvel movies, we want to do tabular regressions. We want to check how the movie does worldwide based on looking at maybe the domestic and other things. So we click tabular regression. Let's test it out. Okay, my tabular regression, the author. So that's my name. Uh, license okay no license let's just click next and here i need to select a new folder so i'll create a new folder for my project uh, i'll call it my apple ml create it i hit create so i have the um things ready to start working with and this is a no code tool i was really impressed to see that apple has to offer a no code machine learning tool that at, you can use in your applications in apple and i don't know if you can use it uh, externally but let's play with it so the first thing i want to add my data now you can see here and this is the right approach which we mentioned in the beginning i have my training data validation data to validate my model and then test my model now we have a very small data set i'm not going to split it if you have a big one you can split it usually remember this the training data should be not less than 50 to 60 percent then you can put 20 percent for uh, validation and testing again you can read all about these balances uh, but it's, it's a science by itself. But, uh, you know, usually I go for 60, 20, 20. So let's start with the training data. I'll add the Marvel movies data itself. So no target selected here. So let me uh, select the target here, which we said is the worldwide gross. So I've selected the data. Um, okay, so these are all the features. At least one column must be selected. So we're going to select worldwide i think this is what we want so let's let's select some of the interesting ones just to show in the pan below i think this is what uh, is this part is made for so let's select the movie maybe the year uh, budget recovered that's an interesting one uh, the audience score the critic score the budget and the domestic gross so we selected seven out of 17 features or columns here apple is using column which is the obvious one but the name that machine learning uses features okay the algorithm you can leave it at automatic like it gives you or you can click the drop down and select other models fitting uh, yours i think this will be less expensive than um, what we've seen on that robot it will have the basic well-known algorithms probably in here that you can select one of them so let's check them out so you have the random forest i didn't cover that but you can read about it um, you have the boosted tree you have the decision tree and then you have linear regression. So uh, let's keep it automatic. I think it will select the linear regression uh, for such small data. We'll, we'll see. Um, and you see, okay, validation is auto. So split from training data. So already decided that it will validate it here. Okay, so now let's train the model. So you can see the train button here. We just click it and training is complete. The data set is very, very small. That's fine. Now let's go to the evaluation and here you can just um, look at the training data. So maximum error and then the root mean square error and then the, um, the same for your validation. So eventually you might not experience the model as you can do in other tools like obviously AI or data robot. But you know, you have to get a bigger data set I would say. For me, when I tried to run it and see what I get as preview or output, I was getting an error. I think this is because it's a very small data set, which is fine. But it's amazing that we have a no-code tool to develop models in Apple itself. And with this, you can download it. I don't know how where to use it other than Apple. And then you can take it directly to Xcode. If you know how to use it and keep it no-code, or make an endpoint out of it within um, Apple. I am sure I can do it with ChatGPT. You can ask it to, to build it or program it within Apple itself and deploy it. But I don't think Apple works like Azure uh, when it comes to application. I think it's more of a headache. So it will not be my choice to keep digging into the world of um, machine learning. As I said, I'm gonna do it in Azure. So I know it was much. Probably most of you didn't make it to this point. If you did, thank you very much. I hope you liked the video and it brought you value. Please leave a comment in the comment section. If you've seen that value and you believe you want to watch more, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell icon. And with this, thank you and goodbye.